Watching, we want to see a better future for Ukraine. I made it absolutely clear to him that what happened last night, what has been happening in security terms here, is absolutely impermissible in a European state, in a democratic state. The United States stands with you in your search for justice, for human dignity, for security. tents with uh, protesters uh, barricading themselves in central city unwilling to go anywhere and st recent statements by the prime minister are adding more fuel uh, to the fire he said i quote that the fact that the protesters uh, overtook some uh, governmental buildings is a clear sign of an attempted coup d'etat in the country on the other hand he also said that the government was ready to sit at the same table with the opposition to negotiate a plan how to work this political crisis out uh, and he also promised that uh, peaceful protesters will not be touched by the special forces, by the police. We've obviously seen reports of a truce between the government and the opposition. Truth is, uh, truce is implemented, it could provide space for the sides to resolve their disagreements peacefully. With regard to Ukraine, along with our European partners, we will continue to engage all sides, and we continue to stress to President Yanukovych and the Ukrainian government uh, that they have the primary responsibility to prevent the kind of uh, terrible violence that we've seen, to withdraw riot police to work with the opposition to restore security and human dignity. And, and ultimately, it, it is the regime that is responsible for resolving the current situation. It is the re regime that created this situation, not by, not by taking decisions that were merely unpopular, but by undertaking decisions that, that went against the very nature and aspirations of Ukraine as an independent state. And for that reason, we hold the government responsible and urge them to take all the steps necessary to resolve the situation and to put Ukraine back on the democratic and Euro-Atlantic path that the Ukrainian people desire.
So it's time to set the record straight. The Russian government would have you believe it was the opposition who failed to implement the February 21st agreement that called for a peaceful transition. Ignoring the reality that it was Yanukovych who, when history came calling, when his country was in need, when this city was the place where the action was, where the leaders of the nation were gathered in order to decide the future, he broke his obligation to sign that agreement, and he fled into the night with his possessions, destroying papers behind him. I would like to remind you that I am not only the not only the legitimate president of Ukraine, but I'm also the chief of staff, the commander of the army. I am alive and I have not been impeached according to the Ukrainian constitution. The United States and a number of other countries have been stressing that I have allegedly lost my legitimacy because I fled the country. Let me say again, I never fled anywhere. While the radicals were attacking and seizing constitutional and public and government buildings, as you all know very well, I was in Ukraine, in Kharkiv in particular, uh, and later I went to Donetsk and to the Crimea. During the coup, I never left the territory of Ukraine. These days, there have been quite a few attempted terrorist actions against me, but they failed. extraordinary awe, the power of individuals unarmed except with ideas, people with beliefs and principles and values who have reached for freedom, for equality, for opportunity. There's nothing more important in this world. That is what drives change in so many parts of the world today. It's really partly why the world is in such a uh, state of transformation in so many different places at the same time. These uh, brave Ukrainians took to the streets in order to stand peacefully against tyranny and to demand democracy. So instead, they were met with snipers who picked them off one after the other. The Russian government would have you believe that the Ukraine government somehow is illegitimate or led by extremists, ignoring the reality. Disguised behind a veneer of an allegedly legitimate government, there is a gang of ultra-nationalists and fascists now acting in Ukraine, involving people who are now aspiring to a presidential office. These people are firing security officials, both in the center, in Kyiv, but also in Ukrainian regions. The cities are being patrolled by masked gunmen, and there is an increasing flow of lawlessness against Ukrainians. This new government is firing officers from the army, those officers who do not want this lawlessness to be committed against civilians. Just think of it, they want the army to act as Bandera gangs and they want a civil war to break out. They want to engage militants from nationalist organizations and to arm them. I would like to ask their patrons in the West, those who patronize these dark forces, are you blinded by what is happening? Have you lost your memory? Have you forgotten what fascism is?
a competition between the United States and Russia. I think this is uh, a, an expression of the hopes and aspirations of people inside of Syria and people inside of the Ukraine. We must also expand and sharpen our international broadcasting to Russia and to Ukraine and others in the region in order to counter the propaganda that Moscow is peddling to spread instability and fear that it can then exploit. One of the most important things that can happen here is if we get back up on our feet with a type of effective broadcasting, Radio Free uh, Europe, uh, Radio Liberty used to do uh, into that part of the world. So this committee just passed and the President signed legislation to improve broadcasting into Ukraine. We are in an information war and we are looking to see what else is needed uh, in this effort to have surrogate radio bring real news in real time uh, in terms of what is actually happening in the eastern part of the country and in Russia into that region. And one of the biggest concerns that we've seen is uh, the Russian propaganda that has been uh, blasted out nonstop, suggesting somehow that the Ukrainian government uh, is responsible for the problems in eastern Ukraine. That is absurd. And there is no other word to describe it. Mr. Lavrov's ludicrous claims from yesterday. But one of the difficulties we face is this massive Russian propaganda campaign. But also that there are no journalistic standards, including a standard of truth in what's being propaganda pumped out. Propaganda bullhorn that is the state-sponsored Russia Today program has been deployed to promote, actually Russia Today Network, has deployed uh, to promote President Putin's fantasy about what is playing out on the ground. They almost spend full time devoted to this effort to propagandize and to distort what is happening or not happening in Ukraine. Would that Russia allowed it, would that the separatists allowed it, this would be the freest media environment Ukraine has ever enjoyed for an election. But as you know, uh, it is precisely that free media environment that is threatening to this uh, illegally armed movement. There is a sound uh, framework for free media. The head of Ukraine's state TV company has been attacked and forced to resign by at least three MPs from the far right Svoboda party. They barge their way into the offices of Olisandra Pantelemonov, accusing him of serving Putin and being Moscow trash. They were angry that the company had broadcast the Russian parliament signing a treaty with Crimea. Ironically, the man with the ponytail is the deputy head of Ukraine's Committee on Freedom of Speech. Propaganda megaphone is the only thing that can be heard. So we are very grateful to this committee. We're very grateful to the Congress for the support that you're showing for the programming. We are, we are helping uh, the Ukrainians. We recently increased by a million five our support to Ukrainian government efforts to help prepare for the election and get truth out we across. We have recently increased the uh, support we give to the Ukrainian government for its own media center. Uh, we uh, have a very sizable public diplomacy program in Ukraine. We have uh, get us back to the kinds of tools that we used to have for this kind of uh, this kind of uh, an put effort. Out, uh, a regular product twice a week to all of our embassies, to all of our um, contacts in the media around the world, and particularly in Europe, uh, counteracting falsehoods and putting out uh, truth. A very we intensive have. effort with our allies and partners to support those voices trying to correct Russia's false narratives. I think you've probably seen our United for Ukraine campaign which is now only 5% government content. The other 95% is taken up by global supporters of Ukraine. So these efforts are very important, but we're gonna have to do more if, this, if we are now back to the future and in a propaganda um, uh, environment uh, where truth is not an obstacle. Mounted in the last um, couple of months under under secretary um, for public diplomacy Rick Stengel's authority and all of government uh, efforts to counteract Putin's lies. It includes our United for Ukraine Twitter campaign which now has 
totally outstrip government. Only 5% of the content is government. It's 95% now a public conversation. In numerous tweets today, and I think this is a new development, the Russian Foreign Ministry seems to have stolen your hashtag United for Ukraine meme. Um, do you have any reaction to this? Why they're, 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 they're putting out their stuff with United for Ukraine on it. Uh, they seem to have hijacked or be trying to hijack it. Would you suggest that they get their own, or are you okay with this? I don't think they're living by their And one of the things that the Ukrainians are very focused on now is a get-out-the-vote campaign uh, across, across the country. still not completely clear who incited the violent attacks on City Hall and the President's office. Some accuse ultra-right-wing supporters, others say it was provocateurs. Whoever it was, the group was prepared and very well organized. As we can see on uh, the pictures, uh, the attack uh, on the municipal authorities uh, building in uh, Kiev has been uh, inspired and uh, conveyed by ultra-nationalist forces. What's quite interesting, those parties get some support and funding from uh, NGOs, which are run by uh, American foundations, quite uh, active uh, on the Ukrainian political scene. Adding fuel to the debate around who masterminded the clashes is the continuous appearance of European politicians at Kiev's protests. What do you think? Uh, I think we're in play. Good. So, uh, I don't think Cleet should go into the government. I don't think it's necessary. I don't think it's a good idea. I, I, I think Yats is the guy who's got the economic experience, the governing experience. He's he's the guy, you know, what he needs is Cleach and Tani Book on the outside. He needs to be talking to them four times a week, you know. I, I, I just think Cleach going in, he's going to be at that level working for Yatsenyuk. It's just not going to work. I'll go for uh, two minutes to Mr. Rohrbacher, chair of the Europe and Eurasia subcommittee. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I just happen to be uh, chairman of this subcommittee at this particular moment in history. How interesting. I think that we should um, all understand that the situation in Ukraine is much murkier than what is being presented by the rhetoric that we hear uh, every day. This is not simply a case of Russian aggression. When that president, Yanukovych, was forced out of office by street violence, that's when this chaos started. So let's not uh, say, oh my goodness, the Russians were must, uh, are responsible for all this problem that's going on. The fact is, it started before there was any Russian inter in intervention at all when an elected president was thrown out, and my gosh, the United States didn't seem to be concerned that this elected person in a, in a free election was being uh, kicked out by, which basically was based on street violence uh, that uh, created chaotic, a chaotic situation in which, of course, uh, we ended up with what? Yanukovych, of course, was someone who was elected the last time very well-observed election, I might add. Uh, matter of fact, Chris Smith uh, was there observing that election, gave that election a very big plus. Yanukovych was elected, so he does represent a significant point of view in that country. In 2010, uh, Yanukovych won against Timoshenko, uh, and of course, um, uh, Yoshenko came in a very distant third, but it did trigger a runoff, uh, and you know we didn't get the winner, and it was um, uh, Yanukovych, uh, and it was judged to be a free and, and you know, a, a, a true uh, election with some discrepancy, but largely free and fair. Uh, this all began. When did, the, when did this um, crisis begin? When did the chaos that we see begin? It would begin when an elected president of Ukraine, who was uh, probably elected in the fairest and 
and the most honest election Ukraine has when ever had. When was that street violence? When did it start? It started when the elected president decided, decided, as he, as he rightfully was elected to do, to make an, an economic agreement with Russia rather than the EU. No, this is much, much murkier than what's being presented. One thing is for sure, we should not be jumping into it. Opposition members of parliament in Ukraine are up in arms over the suspension of negotiations on a trade pact with the European Union just a week before it was due to be signed. An order issued by the prime minister stated that talks on the long planned association agreement were to be halted for now, adding that Kiev would focus on strengthening economic ties with for that Moscow. Reason we hold the government responsible and urge them to take all the steps necessary to resolve the situation and to put Ukraine back on the democratic and Euro-Atlantic path that the Ukrainian people have. It is about all those who value democracy. We didn't get a reassuring message from our European partners. We weren't convinced that the losses in our commercial relations with Russia, which we've been suffering over the last four months, would be balanced by the future sales of our products on European markets. What are our policies? When are we in favor of territorial integrity? When are we in favor of self-determination? When are we cheering on the people of South Sudan or Croatia? When are we opposed it? Why do we oppose the independence of northern uh, uh, Kosovo? That street uh, violence that happened that led to this Mr. Yanukovych's removal, um, there were pictures that people of people running around with these uh, that were we were told were neo Nazis. Is there were there neo Nazis in those uh, efforts, street violence that uh, uh, led to Mr. Y uh, Yanukovych's removal? <laughs>
Yeah. Yeah. So that it was in this sense disturbing that if it starts now to live its own life very powerfully, that it already discreditates from very beginning also this new coalition. Any indication that there were uh, guns being involved with the uh, uh, anti-government demonstrators at that time? There is no question that as the protests became more and more virulent and as the response of Yanukovych's police became more and more brutal, uh, the tensions and the uh, potential for use of weapons escalated on both sides. Unarmed, except with ideas. Suggestions or implications that somehow Americans are responsible uh, for meddling uh, inside Ukraine. Uh, I have to say that um, our only interest is for Ukraine to be able to make its own decisions. Uh, and the last thing we want is disorder and chaos uh, in the center of Europe. So, uh, you know, for, for the German audience who perhaps is, is uh, tuning into Russian TV, uh, uh, yeah, I, I would just advise to uh, stay focused on the facts and, and, and what's happened on the ground. Impressions are yes. sad. So that, well, my my impression is in this sense sad that uh, there is, well, no trust uh, towards also these politicians who will return now to the coalition. The, uh, well, people from Maidan and from civil society, they say that they know everybody who will be in new government. All these guys have dirty past. Люди боролися проти агресорів, які намагалися захопити землю. І ці агресори мотивували своє захоплення не тільки бажанням, і не стільки бажанням захопити чужі території і поработити людей. Вони також висували гасла про начебто звільнення нації і народів, які проживають на землях, які збирався захопити Гітлер. Якщо ви дивите, читаєте історію, зараз... Дуже багато телепередач про це. Ми бачимо, що він перед усім висував гасла звільнення людей від комуністичного іга, звільнення людей від тирана Сталіна, звільнення від інших речей. Смотрите, в 
Звільнення нашої батьківщини! За звільнення земель, які були за гарбом! Russian government would also have you believe that the calm and friendly streets, one of which I walked down, but many of which I just drove through, that somehow these streets of Kiev are actually dangerous. Ignoring the reality that there has been no surge in crime, no surge in looting, no political retribution. The enormous pressure against the members of parliament uh, that there are un <laughs> uninvited visitors during the night uh, uh, to, to party members. Well, journalists, some journalists who were with me, they saw during the day that one member of parliament was just beat in front of the parliament building by these guys with the guns on the streets. Not a single piece of credible evidence supports any one of these claims. <laughs> Ми просто прийшли по це, що відбувається в Києві. Ми не згодні там з тими, може не згодні десь з вами, але бити ось так просто людей – це капець. І ніхто нічого не заступає, нічого, просто. Покружає там пас, пацанов чоловік 10 з дубинками і хуярить. Ногами, руками, по лицу, все. Це безоказано, розумієте? Я відходив зі своєю жінкою, я захищав її. На нас накинулося чоловік дітей, оторвали, так далі, 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 так далі,
все время утверждал, что у нас националисты про американскую и про западную политику проводят и отстаивают их интересы. Но я ошибся, потому что судя по тому, кто у нас начинал захватывать здания, администрации и когда, вы не забыли, господа националисты, кто захватывал СБУ, милицию, кто захватывал арсеналы, кто захватил оружие и до сих пор тысячи стволов находятся в руках тех, кто уже сформировали бан формирования и шастают по всей Украине. Разве не вы дали пример и сценарий? Так оказывается, вы выполняли не американские, а сценарии Российской Федерации по уничтожению независимости Украины, по расколу Украины, по разграблению Украины. Вы эти примеры все показали сегодня, граждане объективно правильно используют, потому что вы все время говорили о том, что вам угрожают силовиками. Вы сегодня вооруженных людей бросили против тех, кто мирным путем хотели отстоять свои права. Вы сегодня все делаете для того, чтобы запугать людей, вы арестовываете людей, вы ведете и развязали борьбу против инакомыслия. Я считаю... As international observers on the ground have borne witness, prior to Russia's escalation, there was no violence. There was no broad-scale assault on the right side. were an eyewitness, to a certain extent, a participant of the drama. Can you tell us what you saw happening on that day? A couple of days ahead of the tragic day, we learned about a planned march by the so-called ultras, or football fans, in Odessa. The route of their march lay through a major square where our camp was set up. These seemingly peaceful fans gathered on Saborna Square in downtown Odessa, but then they took out shields, helmets and arms. Back at the square where we were stationed, we had the Odessa militia and the people's militia units. The Odessa militia moved to Alexandrovsky Avenue to block their march through our camp. Well, we were all aware of the outcome of possible clashes. After Kharkov and other cities, the ratio of forces was 10 to 1. When violence broke out, we rushed to that place because it was a matter of life and death. We kept up our defenses for around two hours. The attackers carjacked a fire truck, broke through the police lines and pushed us back. They forced us to split into smaller groups of 10, 15 people. Our group was one of the first to get back to the camp. You see, no one really expected such cruelty and hatred, so we got inside the trade union's building and closed all the doors. We thought they would set the tents on fire and leave. Obviously, it wasn't enough for them. They started hurling Molotov cocktails. The outraged crowd outside was shouting that they wouldn't let anybody out alive. The police were idle, not doing anything. There, we saw policemen with red armbands. We still don't know what kind of units they were from, so it could have been a third force. Tatiana, 
There were many photos published from inside the building. Some of them showed dead people with bullet wounds. That's right. Why is that? Did you see anyone shooting at you? The shooting started at Grishesko Street. There were lots of people with gunshot wounds. Half an hour into the fighting, we lost three activists and one policeman. All were killed. They were obviously armed as bullets were just flying over our heads like a nightmare. A pregnant woman was burned alive. Many people were strangled. I don't know how they managed to get through the fire, but they did. So activists did get inside the building? Yes. I mean the pro-government activists? Yes, the pro-government activists were able to get inside. They finished off some of the people who managed to escape. Others were thrown out of the windows, including women, the elderly, and men. They wouldn't let the ambulances to get anywhere near. As I said, I was the last one to get out. I was wearing a St. George ribbon on my arm. The emergency doctors were trying to get me out, but they ended up being severely beaten. The attackers blocked me with their bats behind the backs of the policemen. When I asked the policemen to help, they didn't even respond. <laughs> inside the building. For two days, access to it was blocked. It was cordoned off by dense police unit. For 24 hours, 32 burned, unidentified corpses were lying on the street. As we know, the so-called governor of the Odessa region, Mr. Nemirovsky, is planning a parade on May the 9th. So on the morning of May 3rd, the square was cleared up, but there was no investigation underway. Others, not just the United States, speak to their beliefs about the strong connection between Russia and the armed militants, and we certainly stand Play by in that. Sight. Russia continues to fund, coordinate, and fuel a heavily armed separatist movement in Donetsk. The role that Russian special services have played in destabilizing eastern Ukraine is indisputable in supporting so-called separatist coordinated uh, armed attacks on government buildings and in orchestrating kidnappings and violence against local politicians, reporters, and even OSCE monitors. But in the 21st century, where every citizen can broadcast messages, images, and video from the palm of their hand, no amount of propaganda is capable of hiding such actions. No amount of propaganda will hide the truth and the truth is there in the social media and across the pages of newspapers and in the video of televisions for all of the world to see. No amount of propaganda can withstand that kind of scrutiny today. Even as we were preparing to meet in Geneva, we know that the Russian intelligence services were involved in organizing local pro-Russian militias. Some of the individual special operations personnel who were active on Russia's behalf in Chechnya Georgia and Crimea have been photographed in Sloviansk, Donetsk, and Luhansk. Some are even bragging about it by themselves on their Russian social media sites. You keep calling it evidence. Mm -hmm. Do you think that this is evidence that would stand up in a, in a, in a, in a, in a court of law? I, I don't think it's a legal, uh, we're not making a court of law case here. We're just no. showing 
that this is photographic evidence that indicates uh, the connection we've been talking about for weeks You're now. saying that these photographs um, back up classified intelligence that no, you've No, I'm not saying that the... at all. I'm saying they back up the public argument we've been making for weeks. What we see in the photos that have been, again, in international media, on Twitter, and publicly available, yeah. is that there are individuals who uh, visibly appear to be tied to uh, Russia. Right. We've said that publicly a countless number of times. I will let you all draw the conclusion. The range of the photos that the Ukrainians have provided, and to be fair, a number of U.S. officials have tweeted and provided publicly, mm -hmm. are from publicly available photos, either in international media mm -hmm. or already on Twitter, um, that show uh, either individuals or, um, or signs um, of a connection with uh, between Russia and some of the armed militants in eastern Ukraine. So uh, that, as you know, has long been uh, what we have uh, believed and we've made the case publicly uh, about, um, whether that's the secretary or the president or others. Um, so these are just further evidence of the connection between Russia and the army. I, I guess I'm just not sure why you keep in pointing out that they're publicly available. I mean, that, no one's saying they're not, but, mm -hmm. and, and, but you know, just because they're publicly available doesn't, I, I don't see how that buttresses your argument one way or the other. What that I'm the United States government, with its, you know, great tradition of intelligence gathering and sources and so on, is now dependent on publicly traded photographs on the internet and, and twi uh, Twitter and Secretary so on? Secretary Kerry has stated, we continue to have high confidence that Russia's hand is behind this. Just if you look at these photos. I'm just, as, as you know, and you've talked about, mm -hmm. and, and, and the Russians have talked about as well, there's this propaganda war that's going mm -hmm. on between the, the two sides. And what we saw last week was Secretary Kerry in Geneva getting up and talking about this leaflet that was put mm -hmm. out which uh, uh, regarding Jewish registration in Donetsk. And it, it, it appears that this is just a hoax. This is, this is not a real thing, and yet it was... Uh, identified as uh, as a something of major significance um, by the secretary and by and by and, and uh, there's by others. There's a range I, of uh, details out there we've talked about that that leads us to believe there's a strong connection. We'll let people draw their own conclusions. Jen, um, I guess a different interpretation of the photos than. Well, there were a range of photos, and not just a range of photos. The Ukrainians presented a range of photos um, in Vienna just a few weeks ago. There have been a range of photos available in international media, available on Twitter and social media sites that have portrayed um, a range of events. I think you're talking about one photo. Uh, we still uh, feel confident that there is a strong connection between Russia um, and the armed militants in eastern Ukraine. Uh, И пусть Аль поедет, развлекается, всех отстреливает там и в мешках, и в центральную тюрьму. Потому что эти люди не заслуживают, они на чужой территории находятся. На нашей украинской территории. Крым это, Харьков, Днепропетровск, Донецк, это все наша территория. И если там находится российский гражданин с георгиевской ленточкой и орет, срывает наш флаг, ему надо стрелять в голову, потому что это враг. И не надо с ним разговаривать, не надо его воспитывать. Я бы действовала намного жестче. Я бы их просто стреляла, простите. Послушайте, враг господствует на нашей земле. О чем мы говорим? Его нужно было гнать отсюда еще с 1654 года. Поэтому сегодняшняя реакция абсолютно адекватна. Но меры должны быть намного жестче. Наши люди положили свои жизни. Поэтому эти существа, которые ездят сюда, заслуживают только одного – смерти. Bella ciao, bella ciao, bella ciao, 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 stamattina. Sono te Dio, eh! Stavi via, bella ciao, bella ciao, bella ciao, 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 Come 
as it purports to. And if they were threatened, we would support efforts to protect them, as would, I am told, the government of Ukraine. ...end to violence, intimidation, and the seizure of buildings and weapons. ...call for the illegally armed groups to stand down. ...clear that President Putin is responsible for this crisis. He has trampled on Ukraine's sovereignty. He has illegally seized Crimea, the first annexation in Europe since the end of World War II. He has tried to instigate separatism and destabilize the country, and he has massed his troops on Ukraine's border, promoted discord and conflict, and set individuals, families, and peoples against one another. Mr. Putin say, well, Kiev has to do a better job of reaching out to uh, Eastern Europe or, or Eastern Ukraine. Uh, you've seen attempts by Kiev in a very serious way to propose decentralization uh, of power. Uh, these sanctions. I would think that in order for them to really be affected, the people of Russia have Well, we condemn the outbreak of violence caused by pro-Russia separatists this morning in Mariupol, which has resulted in multiple deaths. Uh, we continue to call for groups who have jeopardized public order by taking up arms and seizing public buildings in violation of Ukrainian law to disarm and leave the buildings. Ошибся, потому что, судя по тому, кто у нас начинал захватывать здания, администрации, и когда вы не забыли, господа националисты, кто захватывал СБУ, милицию, кто захватывал арсеналы, кто захватил оружие, и до сих пор тысячи стволов находятся в руках. Разве не вы дали пример и сценарий? Так как... From day one, the government of Ukraine started making good on its commitments. The Ukrainian government began implementing its part of the Geneva Agreement even before the ink was dry on the text. The day after, they impl uh, the Ukrainian government sent a draft amnesty bill to the Rada on April 14th, 29th, and just yesterday, the Constitutional Reform Commission has held broad public conferences with all the regions, and Ukrainian security forces instituted an Easter pause in their operations and sent senior officials out with the OSCE teams to Donetsk and Slavyansk and Luhansk and other embattled cities to try to talk separatists into pursuing their aims politically rather than through violence. From day one, Prime Minister Yatsenyuk has kept his word. He immediately agreed to help vacate buildings. He suspended Ukraine's counterterrorism initiative over Easter, choosing de-escalation despite Ukraine's legitimate fundamental right to defend its own territory and its own people. You will have seen the trip of Prime Minister Yatsenyuk uh, to the most embattled area of the East, Slavyansk, yesterday uh, on a mission of political reconciliation. <laughs> Ciao, 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 ciao
sector militia been disarmed and has Kiev tried very hard to disarm them? Uh, the government of Ukraine has made a massive effort to disarm the Pravi sector to lock up those leaders who have been uh, found to use violence. They are also putting them on trial. They've also offered a weapons buyback program and they're working very intensively. Uh, in how, the, uh, how successful has that effort been? Uh, they have made significant progress and there's more progress to make. Человек! 
человеку ногу, блядь, перебили нахер. Автоматом, блядь. As Ukrainian forces move to restore order in eastern Ukraine, uh, it is obvious to the world that these Russian-backed groups are not peaceful protesters. They are heavily armed militants who are receiving significant support from Russia. The Ukrainian government has the right and responsibility to uphold law and order within its territory, and Russia needs to use its influence over these paramilitary groups so they disarm and stop provoking violence. We agreed that all sides would refrain from violence, intimidation, and taking provocative actions. The world has rightly judged that Prime Minister Yatsenyuk and the government of Ukraine are working in good faith. Russia has talked about Russian-speaking minority citizens who are under siege. They're not. And in fact, this government has acted remarkably responsibly. This government has shown remarkable restraint throughout this process. Uh, the notion that this is some spontaneous uprising in eastern Ukraine uh, is belied by all the evidence of well-organized, trained, armed militias with the capacity to shoot down helicopters. Generally, uh, local protesters uh, don't possess that capacity of surface-to-air missiles or uh, whatever weapons were used to shoot down helicopters, tragically. Uh, we've seen troubled by separatists' insistence that they move ahead with a referendum this weekend. 
It is clear that Russian special forces and agents have been the catalyst behind the chaos in the last 24 hours. Some have even been arrested and exposed. Russian disinformation campaigns have only made matters worse, and I echo the sentiments of the chairman of this committee uh, as this committee has moved forward in a bipartisan effort to increase international broadcasts. That referendums have zero credibility in the eyes of the world. They are illegal by anybody's standards. They don't meet any standard, not a single standard of objectivity, transparency, fairness, or being properly conducted as a public referendum or election. And indeed, the people organizing them didn't really even pretend to meet any of those standards. Right now, uh, Ukrainian troops are battling separatists in East, eastern Ukraine. Every day since we left Geneva, every day, even up to today, when Russia sent armored battalions right up to the Lubansk Oblast border. The world has witnessed a tale of two countries, two countries with vastly different understandings of what it means to uphold an international agreement. And the world, sadly, has rightly judged that Russia has put its faith in distraction, deception, and destabilization. Creating this crisis, Putin is uh, trying to mask the ills that he faces at home, and who better to play his foil than us here in the United States, with a growing number of Russians dissatisfied with the economy and his policies, the latest news that Putin is now supporting the May 25 election must be taken with a, a grain of salt, because there's surely ulterior motives. As NATO's supreme allied commander in Europe wrote this week, what is happening in eastern Ukraine is a military operation that is well-planned and organized, and we assess that it is being carried out at the direction of Russia. With regard to Ukraine, Along with our European partners, we will continue to engage all sides. And we continue to stress to President Yanukovych and the Ukrainian government uh, that they have the primary responsibility to prevent the kind of uh, terrible violence that we've seen, to withdraw riot police, to work with the opposition to restore security and human dignity. And, and ultimately, it, it is the regime that is responsible for resolving the current situation. Uh, oh, go ahead. Sorry, go ahead. Does the U.S. approve of Kiev sending troops against protesters in the East, and how does it fall under the Geneva Agreement that was designed to help de-escalate the situation? Doesn't it further escalate it? Sure. Well, let me just outline, and Matt asked a little bit of this, right too, to I maintain uh, <clears throat> calm, maintain stability, uh, maintain order uh, in their country. So you could, okay, uh, other than putting all responsibility on Russia, which, by the way, is saying that it doesn't have control over everything that's happening in East Ukraine, <coughs> What does the U.S. do to de-escalate, to help de-escalate this situation, other than putting all responsibility on Russia? Well, uh, I don't think it's putting all responsibility on Russia at all. We, there were, Was I, it a coincidence I, that uh, both times Kiev uh, ordered troops to East Ukraine came right on the heels of top U.S. officials' visit to Kiev? First time it was John Brennan, and this time it was Vice President Joe Biden. I Did uh, Vice President uh, Joe Biden advise Kiev to take such action, or was it just a coincidence? I think you're simply uh, restating uh, Foreign Minister Lavrov's ludicrous claims from yesterday. But what is the response? I think we're what ready to response? move on to a new Ukraine question. Go ahead, Elise. Can I oh, something topic? else? Anyone else in Ukraine? Go, Ukraine, go ahead. Uh, Ukraine reports that uh, Ukrainian military attacked uh,
I hear calls from people in the southeast to lay down arms. I tell my partners in Kiev, it's a great call, but pull the army away from the civilians first. Are you completely out of your mind? APCs, tanks, artillery, against who are you going to use the artillery and the aircraft? about this Russian colonial federalization? One of the thorniest issues in foreign policy is self-determination versus territorial integrity. We supported the independence of South Sudan and accepted the independence of Eritrea. In Europe, we supported the independence of each of the republics of the Union of Soviet Socialist Republics. We supported the independence of each of the republics of the Federation of Yugoslavia. Uh, we created the independence of Kosovo. Um, on the other hand, we oppose the independence of northern Kosovo. We oppose the uh, independence of the Krajina region of uh, Croatia, which was inhabited by Serbs. We oppose the independence of Abkhazia and South Ossetia, and we, of course, oppose the independence uh, or any other action with Crimea. Seems kind of haphazard. Um, in Moscow, they note that although I've identified like 30 different decisions we've had to make in Europe that seem haphazard, every single one of those decisions is the anti-Moscow decision. The world is waking outside my window. Bella ciao, bella ciao, bella ciao, ciao, ciao. Turns my senses into the sunlight. For there are things that I must do. Wish me luck now. Una mattina mi sto svegliato con oh, bella ciao, bella ciao, bella ciao, ciao, ciao Una mattina mi sto svegliato e ho trovato l'invaso Oh partigiano, portami via Con oh, bella ciao, bella ciao, bella ciao, ciao, ciao Partigiano, portami via Perché mi sento di morire E se io muoio da partigiano Che passeranno e mi diranno che 
Киевской хунте нет. Киевской хунте нет. Нет места. Донецкая народная республика, да. А вы? Боже, конечно, что мы собрали. Соединяться с этого Киев. И безоружных людей стреляли, которые вышли на демонстрацию, на мирную демонстрацию. Украинцы, которые хотят построить лучшую жизнь и выбирать их лидеров для себя, by themselves. Our view from the start has been that the Ukrainians should be able to make their own decisions. Recognize that basic freedoms, freedom of speech, freedom of assembly, fair and free elections, the ability to run a business without paying a bribe, to not be discriminated against because of your religion uh, or uh, your beliefs, uh, that those are fundamental rights. I don't think it's appropriate for the United States or any other country to come here, talk about the strength and courage of the people in the streets, to, 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 to uh, underscore the value of democracy and of freedom that people are fighting for here, and then just walk away and not do anything about it. I'm sure that the people of Ukraine are able to make decisions for themselves about their future. That the people of Syria are able to make decisions without having bombs uh, going off and killing women and children or chemical weapons or towns being starved. Yeah. Mr. Putin has a different view on many of those issues uh, and I don't think that there's any secret on that. I want to take this opportunity to address the situation in Venezuela and Ukraine and the unacceptable violence in those two countries which the United States strongly condemns. Will Barak be seen as a dictator? Look, uh, Mubarak has been an ally of ours in a number of things that he's been very responsible on relative to geopolitical interest in the region, uh, um, uh, the Middle East peace uh, efforts, uh, um, the actions Egypt has taken relative to uh, um, normalizing relationship with, uh, with Israel. Um, and uh, I, I think that... Uh, um, it would be, I, I would not refer to him as a dictator. Uh, that historic meeting that took place 65 years ago between Franklin Delano Roosevelt and uh, His Majesty's father, uh, King Abdul Aziz, uh, we have had a strong and strategic relationship between the United States and Saudi Arabia. President Obama came out in 2011 and said, wherever people come out to demand freedom and uh, dignity or democracy, they will find a friend in the United States of America. And the people of Bahrain did that. They did take to the streets, and they did demand freedom and democracy. And yet, they did not find a friend in the United States of America. And, you know, in many cases, the Human Rights Watch asserts that even children have been subject to torture by and the Assad you, regime. You see that, that report as credible and, would, would, and, 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 and solid, and you're putting, you're endorsing it? We have no reason to believe that it is not credible. It's based on eyewitness accounts, and they're reporting from a broad cross-section of human rights figures inside Syria. So the next time Human Rights Watch comes out with a report that's critical of Israel for its treatment of the Palestinians, I'll assume that you're going to be saying the same thing, correct? That you think that the report is credible, it's based on eyewitness accounts, uh, as and you're not going to say that it's politically motivated and, 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 and should, it should be dismissed? You know, Matt, as, as you have made clear again and again in this room, we are not always consistent. So, Goyal, in, other words, in other words, anything that Human Rights Watch says that is critical of someone you don't like, that's, that's okay. But once they, once they criticize someone that you do like, then it's, then it's not worth the paper. You're staying silent while people are dying left and right. You know, in Venezuela, rather than trying to distract from its own failings by making up false accusations against diplomats from the United States, uh, the government ought to focus on addressing the legitimate grievances of the Venezuelan people. So, uh, along with the Organization of American States, we call on the Venezuelan government to release protesters that it's detained and engage in real dialogue. And all parties have an obligation to work together to restrain the world is waking violence. And outside my window, Bella Chow, Bella Chow, Bella Chow, 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 drives my senses into the sunlight. For there are things that I must do Wish me luck now, I have to leave you Bella ciao, bella ciao, bella ciao, ciao, ciao With my friends now, up to the city We're gonna shake the gates of hell And I will tell them, we will tell them Bella ciao, bella ciao, bella ciao, ciao, ciao That our sunlight is not for franchise the bastards drop down dead next time you see me
We had to take measures to prevent the situation from developing the way it is now in eastern Ukraine, with tanks and well-armed radical nationalists. Of course, behind the self-defense units of Crimeans, we had our servicemen. So that would be great, I think, to help glue this thing and have the UN help glue it and, you know, fuck the EU. Party, the Party of Regions is fielding four of the 23 candidates who are registered. Mm -hmm. Communists are also there. Every single color of the political spectrum in Ukraine and every region is represented among the 23 candidates. So there's somebody for everybody to vote so for. So it's better, it's, 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 it's more than just the best observed election, it's a legitimate election. Uh, that is what the OSCE assesses. Right, well we did have an election, we did have a legitimate election before and uh, the elected uh, president was uh, removed after we had uh, major street violence in reaction to his decision of going with a uh, economic agreement with Russia rather than the EU. Disguised behind the veneer of an allegedly legitimate government, there is a gang of ultra-nationalists and fascists now acting in Ukraine, in involving people who are now aspiring to pre a presidential office. These people are firing security officials, both in the center, in Kyiv, but also in Ukrainian regions. The cities are being patrolled by masked gunmen, and there is an increasing flow of lawlessness against Ukrainians. This new government is firing officers from the army, those officers who do not want this lawlessness to be committed against civilians. Just think of it, they want the army to act as Bandera gangs and they want a civil war to break out. They want to engage militants from nationalist organizations and to arm them. I would like to ask their patrons in the West, those who patronize these dark forces, are you blinded by what is happening? Have you lost your memory? Have you forgotten what fascism is?